1845, a man named John L. O'Sullivan wrote a newspaper article claiming that it was America's manifest destiny to overspread the continent that Providence has given us, and that the United States was to be a continental empire that went from sea to shining sea. Well, this article was very inspiring to the president at the time, James K. Polk. And what he wanted to do was overextend the empire of the United States across the whole continent. As you can see the green 36 degree 30 line, slavery is allowed below that green line, but not allowed above it. Well, the United States was becoming torn over how much of that territory is really going to remain slave and how much of it is going to remain free. Now in 1846, war broke out between the United States and Mexico. It was a very short war. It only lasted 18 months, from 1845 to 1847. And it was a very brief war. And the thing we got out of this war was that the United States waltzed into Mexico City and captured the capital. And we got very famous military generals, such as Ulysses S. Grant, Robert E. Lee, and Winfield Scott. Now, after the war ended, they signed the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo on February 2, 1848. As you can see in this map, the orange part is what the United States got from Mexico. California, Arizona, Utah, Nevada, Texas, all of that was to be given to the United States. Plus, the United States would pay $15 million to Mexico, and the border would be solidified at the Rio Grande River. Now this treaty was it was very easy to sign. It was proposed and signed instantly, but it still didn't solve the slavery question. In 1850, Henry Clay, yep, he's not dead yet, and yeah, he's still running for the presidency, came up with what was what we called the Great Compromise. He proposed five things. One, California would enter the United States as a, as a free state. Two, slavery would be abolished in Washington, D.C. Three, Arizona and New Mexico territories would be allowed to choose if they wanted slavery. That's called popular sovereignty, giving the people the choice to choose whether or not they wanted slavery. Four, there would be a stricter fugitive slave law. And five, the Texas border between the United States and Mexico would be finally set at the Rio Grande River and would be heavily enforced. Northerners hated this compromise and Southerners embraced it because it really is three to two that the Southerners get more than the Northerners. In 1852, Franklin Pierce was elected president from New Hampshire, but they called him a doe face, a doughboy, because he had a southern principles, but he was from the north. He was from New Hampshire, and he was a Democrat, and he thought slavery was okay. Well, immediately after Franklin Pierce was sworn in, a man named Stephen, Stephen Douglas from Illinois, the little giant as they called him, proposed what was called the Kansas-Nebraska Act. As you can see, the orange territories of Kansas and Nebraska, those territories were going to be given the ability to choose whether or not slavery would exist. Again, popular sovereignty. Once people moved into that territory, they could vote whether or not they wanted slavery. Well, immediately violence broke out in the territories of Kansas. You had people moving in from Missouri called border ruffians who brought violence with them and literally were fighting over whether or not slavery should be there. Well, you also had people who were against slavery. The people who were against slavery were moving out there and trying to create a constitution that would say that slavery would not be permitted in the territories. Well, e violence erupted between the people in Kansas and we have what was called the Sack of Lawrence. Lawrence was the anti-slavery capital of Kansas. They tried to write a constitution to get rid of slavery and immediately a bunch of border ruffians went in and they began attacking the town. They burned printing presses and they, they even were beating people up and killing people. In response, Congress 
had to dis discuss what was going on. Well, in Congress, a man named Charles Sumner from Massachusetts gave a speech called The Crime Against Kansas, where he argued that these border ruffians were, they were just hooligans and violent criminals who were moving out into Kansas and violently spreading their ways of slavery. People in Congress got so flipped out about this, a man named Preston Brooks, the guy with the cane, came into Charles Sumner and started beating him up on the Congress floor in front of the Senate. You had people sending him gifts, golden canes, saying, great job, hit him again, hit him harder. This is crazy, congressmen beating each other up? One man who particularly did not like this was a man named John Brown. As you can see, yeah, he's a really attractive fellow, isn't he? He's not, he's actually kind of crazy. John Brown, a man from New England, Connecticut, decided it was his job to move into Kansas and to show the pro-slavery town of Pottawatomie Creek what he really thought. He and his five sons went into Pottawatomie Creek in May 1856, and they began, they began slaughtering the pro-slavery town people. They hacked people to death in front of their own homes, even hacked their wives to death. John Brown said that it was his fight to go against slavery, that he was going to lead the Civil War against slavery. Not so much. Franklin Pierce, in response to all of this, did nothing. That's right. While bleeding Kansas is going on, while violence is erupted in Kansas, Pierce does nothing. In fact, this is clearly his failure. What Pierce has done is he set up the future presidencies of James Buchanan and Abraham Lincoln to be very difficult times.